What's going on, everybody? Good afternoon. You guys know what is up. If you were on the channel a couple hours ago, you would have seen me post the Pro Football Focus video for the offense. So now we're going to do the same thing for the defense. And this is the side of the ball where things probably went a little bit better overall. The offense, there were some good things. There were some encouraging signs, some promising elements, but the defense just played really well throughout that game. They gave up 14 points, and then they gave up a field goal off a short field. They actually got a turnover. They got some sacks. So there was definitely a sense of the defense being the main reason why this team was able to win. Even if the offense got it done at the end with the uh, late drive, um, yeah, this, um, this uh, defense deserves most of the credit for the win, I think. So let's uh, take a look here, starting with the overall grades. Once again, pro football focus. I'm not saying they get everything right, nor am I saying they get everything wrong. Just looking at what they say and taking it into consideration. Um, before I get into these numbers, though, I want to say, please like this video. Click the thumbs up button if you like this video. Subscribe if you're new. Click the bell for notifications. Become a channel member for $2 a month. Those are the best ways to help support the channel. Okay. So... Sorry if you can hear my dogs upstairs, by the way. But um, looking at the uh, overall grades, just the raw grades themselves, uh, Devin Witherspoon leads the pack, which I'm down with. He gave up a little bit in coverage, but he also made some great plays against the run. He had a batted pass that led to the interception by Hankins. He played probably his best game of the year. I, I, I think that's there's pretty much consensus on that. He had a play where he actually hit Purdy's hand as he was throwing the ball, forced an incomplete pass, so that is a quarterback pressure. Sorry, if again, sorry if you guys can hear that. That's uh, as annoying to me as it is to you guys. But uh, yeah, Witherspoon, I'd say he deserves that. There's only one other guy who I could consider on the defense having played better than um, Witherspoon, and that guy is at the very bottom of this list almost, so we'll, we'll have to get to that a little bit later, but uh, Witherspoon gets the really good grade. Tyrese Knight's in second place. Tyrese Knight is in second place. That's exciting. This is a guy who's going to be on a rookie deal for the foreseeable future. This is a guy who a lot of people didn't really like when we drafted him that much. A lot of people had questions about and they didn't think, at the very least, very few people thought he was going to be successful as a rookie. They all thought he was going to need some time. Well, he hasn't gotten that much time, and he's out there playing at a very high level. Well beyond what even I thought he was going to be able to do, and I liked him more than most people. I did. So this is great. Kobe Bryant continues to play really well at safety. And, I mean, at this point, I know Rayshon's going to be back in the near future. I don't know what you do anymore. I know Rayshon's the guy you signed to be the starter, but Kobe Bryant is playing well. I don't think you can pull Kobe off the field for at least the full full allotment. I think maybe you can pull him off the field every now and then, but Kobe might just need to continue to get his work. Uh, Woolen gets graded out pretty well. I don't know if I agree with him getting over a 70, but... Um, it wasn't terrible like it was last week, or, or the last game, excuse me, but I don't know if it was, like, warranting this. I, I don't. I know he didn't get credited with any missed tackles, but there are some reps where you can just see how, how naturally soft he is, and I feel like that's not really getting captured here all that well. Uh, Mafe, good grade here, just over a 70. Leonard Williams, good. Draymond Jones, good. Um, his run defense grade continues to be pretty putrid, so we clearly see where the issue with him is, but he's doing some things right. Derek Hall, decent, passable. Uh, he got a sack that he didn't necessarily deserve, but he got it. Joby, okay. Jarek Reed, okay. Small sample size anyway. Drake Thomas barely played. Roy Robertson-Harris, passable. Jaron Reed, passable. Julian Love, passable. I thought Love played a little bit better than this personally, but, I mean... I don't think he played an elite game or anything like that. You start to get down into the guys they really didn't like in the last four with Okada, which makes sense to me. Um, you got Hankins. Even though he had the interception, that one makes sense to me as well because there's so much he's just not performing right now as a nose tackle. So many issues there. Murphy, uh, I don't know if I agree with this. This is a pretty poor grade. 
This is like low. I don't know if I go agree with going this low, but he's not really doing much to stand out at the moment. And then you've got the big confusing one, where, which is Ernest Jones somehow gets sub 50, doesn't really get graded well in any area. Yeah, this one doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And I, I'm tempted to just say pro football focus is just wrong here. They're looking at the wrong things. They're considering the wrong information. Maybe I could say, oh, he wasn't effective as a blitzer in this game. And maybe I'd have something there. But And, and look, the coverage stuff is not great with him. But you can't tell me the game that Ernest Jones played um, yesterday warrants a sub-50 grade. It just doesn't line up with anything that I saw out there. It doesn't line up with the results that we got where this team that has a pretty flawed defensive line, not a great defensive line, was still able to stop the run decently. Like, uh, you're, you're not going to sell this one to me. Not this week. So, that's the overall picture on the defense. Um, missed tackles. We had Okada missing two tackles. Um, he's just not a very good player. It is what it is. Boye Mafe had two missed tackles, which is really interesting because he still managed to get graded out really well, which is rare. Usually when you miss tackles, you get kind of killed for it. And everybody else um, had either one or none. You had Kobe Bryant missing one tackle, and I think that was on the last play of the Niners' drive with like three minutes left where he was able to generate the stop even if he didn't actually get the tackle, so it didn't matter at all. Joby missed a tackle, Roy Robertson Harris missed a tackle, and Hankins missed a tackle. So, not too bad. Eight, it's eight missed tackles total. That's, I mean, it's not great, but I'm I'm not unhappy with that. I can live with that. All right, let's take a look at some of the minutia. You take a look at run defense, you take a look at the run stops. I mean, he, here's the thing. Ernest Jones has three full tackles in this game. All three of them are considered to be stops. And his average depth of tackle is one and a third yard, which is crazy, crazy good. I think the issue with Ernest Jones is that he had four assists, and you don't get credit for a stop on an assisted tackle. But I think if he got credit for assisted tackle stops, he'd have like at least five, maybe six stops, and we'd be having a little bit of a different convo, but... I still look at this and I think to myself, this is uh, clearly a player that is doing his job. This is clearly a player who is providing something that we didn't have before he got here. And I don't see how you come out with a 56.6 run defense grade for this, this level of production. It doesn't make sense to me. Rest of it, pretty reasonable. Witherspoon had a really good game against the run. You can see that Tyrese Knight got graded out well against the run as well. Both safeties. And this is what it takes right now because we are getting such forgettable overall play from a guy like Jonathan Hankins. Draymond Jones doesn't play the run well. We're still trying to figure out what we're doing with Byron Murphy. So the guys who are stepping up and helping this team stop the run, I mean, we need it in the worst way, right? Like we're just getting okay run stopping stuff from Leonard Williams overall. It, it's decent, it's fine, it works. But we need guys like Ernest Jones going above and beyond. And right now he is. He really is. Okay, so that's run defense stuff. Pretty good. You're not going to completely shut down the Niners rushing attack. I don't think that's realistic. We did enough to win. And I like what I'm starting to see develop on, on, on that part of the ball. Uh, pass rush, pass rush, pass rush. Did pretty well. 15 pressures, which... Given the fact that you're playing this Niners team where you got very little meaningful pressure last time you played them, I'm going to live with that pretty happily. I will say some of our pressure was probably not super meaningful, but at the same time, you're looking at this and you're like, okay, you got Witherspoon getting home on a blitz. You've got Tyrese Knight getting home on a blitz. And Kobe Bryant gets pressure on a blitz. And you're like, okay, it's coming together. We're starting to get some of this stuff that we thought we were getting from Baltimore last year, it's starting to show up here, where a safety is getting pressure, where cornerbacks get pressures, where linebackers get pressure. And for that to happen in a game against the Niners, who have the capacity to make you look stupid when you try that stuff, 
is encouraging to me. And by the way, I know that people don't like him, and I understand why. I know people are down on him, but Draymond Jones easily leads the way this week in pressures with five. And I know some of those are not going to be real impactful pressures, but some of them will be. We'll see what PFR says later this week, but five pressures from him easily leads the way. So he's doing something. He's not everything we want him to be, but he's doing something. Two pressures from Reed, or three pressures from Jaron Reed. Boye Mafe has two, and then we get one from uh, Williams, one from Knight, like I said earlier, and then you had one from Derek Hall, which was the sack where um, uh, Purdy just fell down, and then you have Kobe Bryant with one. It, it adds up, and... We're, we're cooking a little bit here. It's not stellar. I would remind people that in terms of talent, that offensive line on the 49ers is not that great. I would say that there are certainly much better offensive lines out there, but getting pressure against that team is still hard, and you found a way to do it. Not over the top, but... Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Um, it's, it's still relatively relatively strong. So, encouraging signs here overall. I don't love it, but it's good. Uh, coverage grades, coverage, coverage numbers. Um, you can see that this is probably where Ernest Jones gets hit. Part, uh, and this is the part where I can kind of agree with it. He's not very good in coverage. He gave up a lot. They gave him the touchdown. I No, excuse me. They gave Julian Love the touchdown, which I don't know how they decide who gets credited for giving up the touchdown, when the guy didn't have a Seahawks defender within like eight yards of him, but they give it to Love. And then Ernest Jones gives up five completions for 32 yards on five targets. So I understand that's probably where these guys are getting dinged. And it's not great. I would say that for Ernest Jones, five targets and 32 yards is something that doesn't... It doesn't really affect uh, negatively affect me that much it doesn't really get to me that much because I know he's not great in coverage and I just need him to not be the reason why we're getting murdered and in this game he wasn't five targets on th and 32 yards is something that is tolerable same for Julian Love three targets 31 yards that's actually a good game for him compared to what I've seen from him in other games and really, you can see that the numbers just add up, and they, they, they don't really get that high, right? Like Tyrese Knight, 12 yards on three target on two targets. Yeah, I'll live with that. Witherspoon gives up 37 yards. Uh, he did give up like a third to 11 at least once, maybe twice in this game, but seven targets, 37 yards against this Niners offense. Yeah. Woolen... Woolen I'm a little bit harder on because he has so many weaknesses in other areas, like the tackling, like the run defense. I need him to be aces in coverage, and this 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 game he was not. But 25 yards on five targets is still livable, and Joby, 17 yards, that's not si significant. Kobe Bryant gets targeted one time, five yards. Yeah, I got no issue with that. Like, like nobody really got lit up in this game. Nobody was really the weak link. The closest we had was Ernest Jones, and I I don't think Ernest Jones is ever going to be a great cover player, and I, I can accept that, especially when you consider that guys like Witherspoon are, play, are as tough to deal with as they are, and most of the time, Woolen is also tough to deal with in coverage, even if last few weeks have been not so great for him. Um... You, you, you're going to target somebody, and it's going to be Ernest Jones. So the fact that he only gave up 32 yards in this game in coverage is something that I'm okay okay just living with. Special teams, um, not much to say here. Julian Love stands out, which is certainly interesting. I mean, he finds a different way to help contribute. Um, Patrick O'Connell had a good, pretty good grade. He was getting called up from the practice squad this game, so good for him. And uh, Myers gets a really good field goal grade, which, I mean, we, we saw it. And, um, yeah, we, we've um, got a little bit of a problem down here at the bottom, right? You've got Jake Bobo and Jarek Reed really, really far down the list. That's not okay. Like, Bobo, if he's not going to do stuff on special teams now... Like, you're getting to the point where you have to wonder if Bobo even needs to be on the team because he's not helping offensively either. 
And Jarek Reed is supposed to be our special teams guru. And for him to be at the very bottom, like, it makes you wonder. And it's mostly because he missed a tackle, but you can't be missing tackles. All right, that's it for the defense. See you guys later. Go Hawks. Let me know what you think.